Today, we're gonna to build a gear puller for our electric brushless motor. And when I say we, I mean, I'm gonna do all the work and you get to watch and laugh at it. Welcome to Woods Creek Workshop. My name is Yuchol. My daughter uh, participates in a high school robotics club and they compete all over the state and one of the things that they use on their robots is a brushless motor. And she came to me and said, hey dad, I need to remove some pinion gears off the shaft, but we don't have a gear puller or any other method to remove it. I said, sure, honey, I can make one for you maybe next week. She said, no, I need it tomorrow. So here we are. But designing and building one isn't challenging enough. I don't have the actual dimension or sample of the motor with me because they're all at the school. So that should make it a little more interesting. Only thing I know is that shaft motor is eight millimeters. So let's get started. I'm using cold roll steel here. And as is the case with most machining projects, we start with squaring up all of the surfaces. The school's robot uses four of these Rev Robotics Neo motors and I'm just using half inch end mill to clean up the size. A quick layout helps but later I have to change these dimensions because well I accidentally crossed these lines. <laughs> had to enlarge the opening a bit. I sort of guessed the opening needed just based on visual cues but we do want it center, so using the center finder or edge finder here and uh, just taking a plunge. It seems uh, somebody snuck into my shop and dulled up all my end mills and this quarter inch end mill just isn't happy. So I had to go and grab the roughing end mill half inch. Uh, some sort of a coolant system would have really been perfect for this, but even just the compressed air. I think I'm gonna have to add a mist coolant set up for the mill and the lathe this year. It just would make it so much easier. Here we come back with the quarter inch end mill to clean up the sides and the pockets a little bit. I had to machine an opening for the motor shaft to fit through and there's no critical dimensions here, just big enough while leaving enough material uh, for the rigidity. Then I did step over the bit left and right, just clean up the, the size a little bit. Uh, we're drilling and tapping a hole for a bolt, 516 by 18 coarse thread. Countersinking the hole before you run the tap always helps. The tap I'm using is made by YG1. They're readily available on Amazon and these are by far one of the best uh, value for the money. Uh, I own numerous of, of these taps and they're just awesome. This is a chamfering machine I built in a separate video. I'll put a link for you to check out in the description. It uses a router with a half inch carbide end mill and you can adjust the amount of chamfer very easily. There's a cam uh, knob as you can see there on the left. For steel I turned on the motor RPM uh, but it can go full speed on softer materials like aluminum and brass. Would you look at that? I just love the fact that you get nice even chamfers that match on all edges so quickly. I am grinding down part of the bolt so it would fit through the pinion gear better just to give a little extra clearance. This is an inexpensive uh, index fixture that I modified to get more room for grinding. Normally the black indexing wheel is at the 
front end of the fixture, but with some modifications, I was able to turn it around and it makes it a lot easier to use, not to mention you can see things better. So I'll put the link to that video in the description as well. Putting a little lead-in chamfer and a relief at the end of the bolt here. Well, since so we're going to put a nice finish on these machine parts, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things, the easiest way you can do it is to run it on sandpaper. Now, it helps if you run it straight, not in an angle, because you'll see all those scratch marks on there, right? So try to go um, straight. Give it a shot. Okay. How's it looking? Nice. Kind of in an angle, huh? Yeah. So here's a tip. Use a straight edge, mm -hmm. put it down, and rub against that. That'll okay. ensure that you go straight. So put your left hand and hold it down, and there you go. Cool. Long strokes. There you go. Is it looking better? Much better. Yeah. So do the other side and do all other sides. Now, move it around on the paper, find a clean spot, and uh, that way you get the best finish. Okay, let's look. Uh, this part you're pressing down a lot harder than mm -hmm. the other side. And that's exactly how you're holding it, like this. See your thumb there, 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 there? Yeah. Or finger, I should say. <laughs> so try to uh, pro, uh, apply even pressure, then you get all of the surfaces. Looks more even now. Yeah, I'm not going to get it all out. That's okay. <clears throat> all right, and get the other sides. Ooh. Well, you got to keep it flat. You notice how it's tall, so when you move, it tips over, right? So the trick is when you push, you pu push the bottom. When you pull, you push, you pull that way takes practice well you you can just hold it <laughs> I know you can hold it and just applying pressure more pressure there, oh, there. okay see I see what you mean yeah, yeah. to the other side Wait, wait, this is hard. It's like breathing. If you have to think about it, you mess up. Before we do the coal bluing, we're going to have to clean that very thoroughly. Every, everywhere there's a grease or oil, mm -hmm. it's not going to turn out well. So use the isopropyl alcohol, spray it on there really good, and rub it down with a paper towel right there. Can I grab another? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I didn't know if we were trying to conserve something. We are, but this is not the time. I'm In already inside. I'm already forgetting which sides I cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> the two sides that you're holding on to you have not cleaned. Thank you. Straight now. Yeah. Okay. You know the camera, the people can't see you if you cover it up. Oh, I can't. I'm not left-handed. Well, that's there the things you have to think about when you make videos. Today we're going to use Oxford blue. Okay, so liquid bucan blue. 
Uh, there's hot process and cold process in bluing metal, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, for home shops, hot bluing is just, it's too much work and a lot of <laughs> chemicals, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so what we want to do is you want to put it in there and you use the brush to get the agent all over, okay, okay. everywhere, all right? So just put it in there and then brush it around while it's still in there? Yep, yep, okay. and then you can rotate it, just work it, whatever you need to do to get it all over, okay? I'm kind of scared. Oh, whoa. Yep, you gotta move fast. No kidding. Stuck. Doing good. Just dip it in there and just get nice uh, I'm not going to like overdo it. No, no. You're not going to overdo it. And make sure, put the brush in that hole where it's threaded. And get, get that in there. There you go. Okay. Just take it out and put it right here. See how the color changed right there? Mm -hmm. There's actually oxidation, rust in there. So it's important if you use it, just take out how much you're going to use and throw it away. Yep. Don't put it in there because it'll ruin the rest of it. Because okay? it will oxidize. All right. So use the uh, towel. The you can put it in there. Okay. Just wipe it good. Like, like wipe it. Like wipe it song. good. <laughs> yeah. And what you'll notice, Allison, you'll start to see white build up. So you're like right there. Mm -hmm. That is the product of oxidation, a chemical reaction, okay? Yes. And if you wait and let the agent dry, you're gonna have a bunch of white stuff everywhere and that's okay, mm -hmm. okay? So we're gonna let it dry a bit and then we're gonna rub some oil on it and it's gonna look beautiful at that point. It's gonna look spiffy. Spiffy. <laughs> the next thing I like to do, Allison, is rub a little oil on it. It just makes it pop. Mm -hmm. I don't use anything special. Three in one, you can buy at Lowe's Home <laughs> Depot. You know what I mean? It's like the shampoo of oils. Shampoo the three, oil. The three in one shampoo of oil. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know such thing existed. Really? No. Oh. All right, so rub some on there. Use your fingers and just... Can I put it on there? Yeah. Is that too much? No, so you're gonna need more. Just on all the surfaces, rotate it. I guess I'm in that threaded hole there too. There you go. See, you're blocking the view for all my friends over I'm there on the sorry. camera. I'm not left-handed. Your friends? Yeah. All my viewers. Your BFFs? And, yeah, they're all my friends. Is that who you talk to when I'm gone? Yes, every single one of them. <laughs> Got all the surfaces? Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, you know, personally, mm -hmm. if I was waiting on an operating table and I saw that my surgeon was wearing these gloves, I would not want to be had surgery. Or... Me neither, because these are not surgery gloves. <laughs> so That's fine. Yeah, if your doctor walks in, surgeon walks in wearing these gloves, run, because they're not surgery gloves. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, finish wiping the oil off of that, okay? Whatever you do, mm -hmm. try to take pride in what you do, okay? Because people are going to see it, all right? Yep. Well, you hope so anyway. All right. So look at that. I mean, it's nice and even, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and it's going to keep it from rusting. So these are the push pins or bolts, mm -hmm. okay? I made two different configurations because I don't have your motor to test it all right right so you screw it in there mm -hmm. 
Now that relief, uh, relief there is for your motor shaft to come through. Yep. Okay. And then you tighten this. And it pushes down on the shaft. Exactly. Now the drawing, the spec you sent me, mm -hmm. uh, that says the shaft of the motor is eight millimeters. In diameter. Right. These are smaller. Let's measure it. I mean, it looks like your clock. Yeah, it does look like my <laughs> clock. Uh, so these are just shy of seven millimeters. Do you measure on the threading or like in the little divot? Well, the part that will have to be pushing the shaft through. So your pinion gear mm -hmm. has a hole that is a little bit less than eight millimeters because yes. it has to be a press fit, right? Mm -hmm. So this one has to fit through and it's less than seven millimeters. So there should be... Pr uh, Plenty of clearance, okay? okay? Um, and if you have to push it further, you can use this. I ground that. Mm -hmm. So it goes like this. You need a wrench. There you go. <laughs> that one is a little bit tighter. This one? No, that one. Yeah, that one. Don't answer that. That was a dumb question. That's all right. So it's long enough just to even out with this bottom part okay mm -hmm. that means the, the gear should be off by then hopefully hopefully uh if i was smart i would have drilled another hole maybe to store this but i'm not that smart it's okay a ziploc baggie will do that's right <laughs> so how was your very first cold bluing process what was your experience like um if I had to rate it, I would rate it a solid 9.75 out of 10, mainly because I like chemical reactions and chemistry. So it's nice to be able to get hands on with it and do something in my own home that's not in a school lab. That's good. Well, you know where I keep these stuff, so you can, if you can't sleep at middle <laughs> of the night, you can come out in uh, cold blue. I'm more likely to eat the salami in the fridge than do this. All right. In the middle of the night, at least. Well, so this is, uh, I think this is the first project where you've actually helped me mm -hmm. hands-on, right? Yep. How, how, how was that? Did you like that? Yeah, I did. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, well, I, it only makes sense because it's for you and your robotics plan, yeah. <laughs> right? So, like I said, I don't have the motor or the drawing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I got the dimensions right. But I hope you did, too. We'll find out tomorrow, right? Mm-hmm. So... Thanks for watching. Um, that was a bad. <laughs> that bad. was really bad. <laughs> Catch you later, loser. Nice. Yeah! Yay! Oh, that was a good roar. Huh? Oh wow. You're welcome. You can end the video now. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today Please. we're gonna do a makeup tutorial. Hi.